Now, increasingly violent clashes between Myanmar's military and the ethnic Arakan army in Western Rakhine has forced the November 8th election to be suspended in parts of the state. Voting in 9 out of 17 constituencies in Rakhine has been cancelled. Observers believe the move and the armed conflicts will further alienate the ethnic Rakhine and cause greater unhappiness with the National League for Democracy, led by Aung San Suu Kyi. Mei Wong explains. The civil war in Rakhine, west of Myanmar, rages on. Over the last two years, clashes have escalated between the National Military and the Arakan Army, or AA. It led to the Myanmar government designating it as a terrorist organization in March this year. The AA is an armed wing of the United League of Arakan Political Party that's contesting in November's general election. The AA has been fighting for greater autonomy from the central government and self-governance. It believes that Rakhine state should be governed by its own ethnic people and not be ruled by the ethnic Burma majority in the Naypyidaw government. But having the government label the AA as a terrorist organization, some observers feel is not helpful in resolving the conflict. Labeling them as terrorists is a mistake, huge mistake, because labeling the Aragon army as terrorist is backsliding of the peace process. Any efforts being made, no matter how much it's being made, as soon as the Burma uh, government make that kind of mistake, that national reconciliation will be farther apart. It will become much more distant. Already, the clashes in Rakhine have forced more than 220,000 people to flee from their homes, while nearly 300 citizens have been reported dead. The conflict-ridden state had since 2017 already seen a mass exodus of more than 700,000 Rohingyas to neighboring Bangladesh. But experts believe the fighting will remain contained in Rakhine and Chin states, having little bearing on the national peace process because they're not as powerful compared to other bigger ethnic armed groups. Myanmar has about 20 ethnic armed groups and so far only 10 have signed the nationwide ceasefire agreement since 2015. For the peace process, it is too far for Arakan army for conflict in Lakhai state to, to have a big impact for uh, the transformation of the peace process in Myanmar. The main stakeholder still uh, focus on ethnic armies along Thai Myanmar borderland. In the future, we will focus on ethnic armies along uh, Chinese Myanmar borderland. But for AA, the side of its armed force, despite the fact that uh, it, it shows some strong capability in military fighting, uh, AA still need to collaborate strategically with other ethnic groups in Sino-Myanmar borderland. Since the middle of this year, the Myanmar military had issued a unilateral ceasefire to ensure peaceful elections and to help battle COVID-19. However, AA was excluded. That some few may end up driving voters to support the local ethnic Arakan National Party even more this time. The cancellation of polls in more than half of Rakhine observers say will likely generate even more animosity among local residents towards the ruling NLD. In 2015, they won majority, the, the Rakhine party won majority in their own state, but they were not allowed to form the government. NLD is minority, they formed the government. As a result, um, there's been conflicts with the Rohingya crisis, the conflict with the Arakan army and the Myanmar military, and that impacts uh, the, the impacts of those conflicts has been um, very ser serious and the sufferings of the people, people still dying, uh, dying from bombs and, and gunshots. The Arakan National Party was the third biggest winner in the 2015 general elections. It secured 22 seats in the national parliament then. About 10 ethnic Rakhine parties will be participating in this year's general elections. And like other ethnic parties will be contesting in the other 13 states and regions in Myanmar, the Arakan-based parties aim to send a strong signal to the NLD government that they want greater autonomy so that they can manage their own Rakhine people's affairs. But now, with the cancellation of polls in most of Rakhine state, it appears the Rakhine ethnic political parties, especially Arakan National Party, may have lost the chance to fight 
even before the political battle had begun. Mei Wong Sieni, Bangkok. And uh, for a closer look, we are joined now by Amara Thiha from the Myanmar Institute for Peace and Security. Now, with more than one million um, in Rakhine barred from voting, and I believe Myanmar's population is about 54 million, but still, how is this going to affect uh, Myanmar's upcoming election? And more importantly, I mean, will the polls still be considered fair? So it is difficult to say that this is going to be the free and fair election. However, there will be the more by elections coming up in upcoming years after this election. Of course, you know, it's depending on the stability and security of the region. So if the conflict is continue and instability is continue in the region for upcoming years, it is difficult to host the election. So it is required to address politically on the political situation in Rakhine. But without having an election, it is quite difficult to say that upcoming election is free and fair and the political space is a bit narrower. So that may own impact the future, not only the future of Rakhine State, but also impact on the larger Myanmar as a whole, if you're looking from the conflict and political stability perspective. Yeah, the Election Commission says the cancellation is due to security reasons, as you alluded to as well. But critics have said the decision is for political gain. Now, what's your take on that? So the election commissions officially say it's not only about the political, uh, it's not, not only about the security, but also due to the segments that, that may not even to convene the free and fair election. For example, the some township in Rakhine State uh, will not record a single conflict or a single uh, kind of armed conflict in the region, and some, you know, areas in the northern Shan State do not record a single armed clashes in the past year. So it is not only about the stability or security, but also rather about the situation or environment that may not easy to convene the election in the particular areas. However, of course, you know, that may off impact on the legitimacy of the election. And some people say it is kind of a uh, gerrymandering process. So this is also impact on the future political environment of the nation. Now, back in uh, 2015, the NLD did promise resolution of ethnic uh, conflicts. Um, give us an overview of the situation now and the impact it will have on the party's election chances. So the, the ethnic conflict is not about the, you know, the agency relation. It's also about the structural institutional problem that we have faced for years. So it is necessary to accommodate the views and political you know, requirements, the political desire of the ethnic peoples, and also need to expand the political space of the ethnic states and ethnic political parties. Of course, you know, NLD have tried in the past year, but it is the way that the way NLDC is more looking from the perspective of the union level political parties, but it is necessary to need to know, understand how the knowledge of the ethnic peoples constructed, how the ethnic people have, you know, experienced the previous conflict. And we have to accommodate all these knowledge and views in the upcoming political dialogue. This is the only way that we can overcome this structural conflict and uh, ongoing armed um, conflict in the region. Thank you for your thoughts this evening. Amara Tiha from the Myanmar Institute for Peace and Security.